Hi, welcome back. Or if you're just joining, my name is Maya and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. And if you've been enjoying my videos, please consider sponsoring a YouTube Super Thanks, which will go directly toward producing more of the content that you look forward to on my channel. Thanks in advance for your support. This is one of the first scarves I covered earlier this summer in my video series on Hermes's Fall Winter 2022 collection. In this video, I'll discuss a bit about the artist and her background, give some context for the design, and share why I found it so compelling. Let's get started! Karin Brankowitz grew up in France and studied illustration, screen printing, and lithography at the École Estienne, a graduate school of arts and printing industry in Paris. After graduating, she started out in a fashion studio and later established her identity as an artist with Biro, paint, and china markers. She reportedly now divides her time between Rome and Paris. Her favorite tool of choice is a ballpoint pen, which she combines with what she describes as, quote, an obsessive attention to detail, the uncluttered elegance of lines, and the severity of the compositions, end quote. Taking doodles to the next level, she has become known for a distinct and slightly surreal hand-drawn style that swings between captivating details and intricate patterns. And certainly that's something that we can see in her designs so far with the house. Working with a primary color palette, Kareem Brankowitz's work is crisp with rich detail. She draws from life and photographs, and reportedly her favorite subject is people although obviously with her MS designs, we've seen several dogs. Her first design for the house was Cache Rendezvous Chez Hermès, a beautiful 70 centimeter silk twill from the fall winter 2021 season. Here, Brankowitz depicts her dreams as a Parisian student. While living in the Quartier Latin, the young designer daydreamed about her mysterious neighbors, sometimes falling in love with them. Each surprise musical note around a corner, each poem performed at a window, each soft step on a landing was a new clue, and she enjoyed imagining these anonymous lives. So, in this design, what mysterious rendezvous is the elegant woman preparing for, with her keys hastily slipped into her pocket. And of course, it's hard to miss the loyal Dalmatian who waits patiently at the bottom of the library. We will see this dog breed again in the En Liberté design from this season, of course. Before we get into the design itself, some background about the camouflage setting, which is based on the Villa Borghese Gardens in Rome, Italy. The villa itself was constructed at the start of the 17th century for the Cardinal Scipione Caffarelli Borghese, nephew of Pope Paul V, and this is surrounded by one of the largest and what is considered one of the most beautiful public parks in Rome. The park is mostly known for its museums that are scattered over the 150 acres, but there's also a cinema, a replica of Shakespeare's Globe Theater, and several monuments. There's an equestrian area that was used during the 1960s Olympics, and of course what we're most interested in vis-a-vis -vis this design, a dog park. This scarf, at its core, celebrates the dog's pure joy when they are off-leash or en liberté, running freely. She truly captures the range of emotions and behaviors that you might see from our four-legged friends, leaping after anything that moves, what must be a bounty of sense for that ultra-sensitive canine nose, quiet observation, or just romping around, and who doesn't appreciate that? Aside from being visually attracted by this design, it 
really does make me smile every time I look at it, thinking about that sweet, furry love from a dog. Given her use of black and white dogs in both scarf designs so far for the house, I wondered if there was a meaning behind it. In the Chinese zodiac, for example, it's generally believed that a white dog with a black head brings fortune to its master, and a white one with a black tail brings honor. And of course, the contrast also made me think of the balance of yin and yang and all that entails. But it could also be that she just likes black and white dogs. So if we run with that and can bear a brief digression just for fun, let's take a look at black and white dog breeds, some of which we can identify in the scarf design. Starting with Border Collies. Bred to be sheep herders, they're quick on their feet and have a good bit of energy according to dog time. They also have luscious coats of black and white fur. Next up, Dalmatians. These are the most classic dog breed that comes to mind when you picture black and white dogs. They're quite athletic and can also be sporty according to Pet Finder. We can definitely spot a Dalmatian in En Liberté as well as her first design for the house. Boston Terrier. Boston Terriers are small dogs with unique black and white coats that are said to resemble tuxedo jackets. These fancy pups are full of energy and love a brisk walk, according to the American Kennel Club. I think there's one of these in the design as well, no? Landseers. These are big, shaggy, black and white dogs and reportedly perfect cuddling companions. They can weigh up to 180 pounds, according to Pet Finder, and are known for their kind, affectionate temperaments. Japanese Chin. These long-haired dogs are highly adaptable to new environments, according to Dog Time, and despite their long hair, they apparently don't shed too much. Another black and white dog, the Old English Sheepdog. These shaggy dogs look almost more like bears with their big furry bodies. And with their gentle dispositions, they're just about a hundred pounds of love. Harlequin Great Dane. Here's another one that I think we can see in the design. Harlequin Great Danes have coats that are similar to that of a Dalmatian according to Great Dane's care. They have a white base with black dots, which reportedly can shift and change size as the dog matures. Portuguese Water Dog Originating from the Algarve region of Portugal, these dogs were bred to be fishermen's helpers, so they've got a good bit of energy and are eager to please, according to the AKC. And despite the fluffiness of their curly coat, they supposedly don't shed too much either. Incidentally, this was a dog breed of President Obama and family, the 44th President of the United States. Finally, Tibetan Terrier. These long-haired dogs were meant to be companions, so they have a gentle demeanor and are well suited to spend time with families, according to Dog Time. Though if you want to keep them with their iconic long hair, know that a lot of grooming will be required. So in the En Liberté design, I feel pretty confident in saying that we can see a Dalmatian, Boston Terrier, and a Harlequin Great Dane. Anything else you recognize? Let me know in the comments. I have seen this in five colorways and ended up with the very first one that I saw of this design, the eggplant green and multicolored version. Although admittedly, I certainly wouldn't say no to the ivory, green, and yellow, or the orange, green, and white either. But like the other recent additions to my collection, this is unlike anything else I have. This is another one of those designs that I know may be too busy for some, but if you think about it, the asymmetry and variety offer so many styling options solely based on how you fold and tie it. And I don't know about you, but I like a scarf that can give you multiple looks depending on which colors and elements you highlight. So my colorway is officially called Aubergine, Vert, and Multicolor, which probably no surprise can be styled with a multitude of colors. 
Aside from the obvious black and white, not just in the dogs, but the clouds and interspersed in the foliage and background, there's the aubergine, this rich eggplant purple, more than a few shades of pink, some greens, blues, such as a sky blue, a periwinkle, and a teal. And oops, there goes my no more blue rule, but this wasn't the main color palette of the scarf, so I made an exception. There's also sort of this brick, orange, red, and even some yellows and khakis. So given that, look at how many options you have with the scarf, depending on which colors you want to pick up or contrast with. This scarf pretty much goes with nearly everything in my wardrobe, which I love. So there you have it. A bit about this gorgeous scarf from the Fall Winter 2022 collection by Hermes. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more, so be sure to subscribe to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!